Hey everyone, it's Ivan, KidBatch.com, out here for another course review, and today we're talking about the four-day heart class, high angle rifle training down at Thunder Ranch. So, broad strokes, what is it? Eh, exactly what it sounds like. Four days of shooting to include high angle rifle training. So, down there at Thunder Ranch, amazing facility down kind of southeast Oregon. It's beautiful down there, and by Lakeview. Not the best town in Oregon, but beautiful area. And it's really cool. Basically four days of shooting to include a bunch of flat range and some really cool stuff, basically from ridge lines. So day one started off, like most classes at Thunder Ranch, lecture by none other than Clint Smith. Just going over largely safety, things like that. And yeah, dipping into a little bit about the course. So you put your money where you want it to be. Okay, so this is one of those that I suggest that you get the best equipment that you can. You already know that. And uh, at this level, when we get here, most of the time we're dealing with people who got their shit in one bag. That said, space shuttle blowed up fucking twice. So the bolt can break, a screw can come. So first thing I would do when I go to the range, me personally, depending on where you came from and how many baggage handlers got to throw your fucking rifle down the thing, I would like to check and make sure all your stuff is tight. Doesn't do any good to work real hard and get a zero, then have shit come loose. That's we then headed out to Brown Range, KD range, known distance, where there's basically targets from 100 out to, I think, 700 yards, as well as some unknown distance stuff in there too, but really just confirming zeros initially. It's one of those where if you show up to any class, whether it's a carbine class, especially a precision rifle class, like show up with your gun zeroed. But that said, things happen. Either something gets beat up in transit or you end up with ammo you didn't think you were gonna be shooting. So maybe your zeros changed a little bit. Not to mention just elevation coming from sea level where I think there we're up at like 5,000 feet. So initially on paper, just working on getting a good solid zero and eventually moving our paper back to 200 yards. And again, making sure we still had a good zero to work with. Once we had those good zeros, we started working on gathering dope, data of previous engagements. So there's some just kind of general guidelines as far as, hey, if you're shooting 308, this is gonna be roughly your drop at 300 yards, 500 yards, so on and so forth, 65 Creedmoor, all that stuff, roughly. But we want to get really good data for our guns and the different loads we're shooting. For my own part, I was actually shooting a six arc mini fix. Pretty cool little setup. Actually really cool, tons of fun to shoot. And basically started again, gathering that dope, shooting on steel. So we had people spotting for us. So they would give us corrections as far as, cause again, we're not trying to just hit like a silhouette. We're trying to hit right in the center of this silhouette. So they would one, give us wind calls as we start to get further, but also give us corrections. Again, trying to just dial that in as far as like, hey, were you holding dead center? Cool, well, you impacted down here. So come up like two tenths or something. And so shoot it again. All right, cool, perfect. Mark that down. That's good dope for you at this distance. And working all the way out to 700 yards, shooting that. That right there pretty much wrapped up day one. I think we might have done a little bit more shooting, just some fun stuff on steel, but basically really valuable. Giving good or getting good honest dope for all these different distances, which was made possible in part. They have an awesome cadre who really competent at calling wind as far as giving you whatever hold you're going to have at distance, but then also like spotting your impacts and being like, hey, come up two tenths, three tenths, whatever it may be in helping you get really good solid dope for your gun. Some places are really heavily reliant on like chronographs, things like that. And then with that, some sort of ballistic app, which I think there's a ton of value in, but with largely Thunder Ranch, they're like, cool, we're gonna go prove this stuff out for your gun and get you good, honest dope for your gun with your ammo at these distances and yeah. It was pretty cool. Day two, we're back out on the brown range and again, still kind of gathering dope, basically confirming everything we got the day before. So working again, 100, 200, 300, 
all the way out to 700 and it's like cool are we where we thought we were and with that confirmed got into some other just honestly kind of fun shooting doing some different stuff on some of the different steel arrays they have out there and one of the things they're big on too is just proving stuff out to include hey on average man with a 100 yard zero like what do you need to do to get ahead at distance and basically you hold center mass out to 300 yards you're like well what about believe me if you want to get a very precise surgical hit at 300 yards yeah you dial for it but basically more of a confidence thing than anything of like hey hold center press the trigger 200 yards hold center press the trigger 300 yards hold center press you will get hits like effective hits on a man out to 300 yards by holding center and pressing the trigger which again the pragmatism of as thunder ranch goes about it treating gunfighting versus like a prs match where you're trying to shoot this little plate at whatever distance again going back to that pragmatic approach of if you need to use this gun hold center and press the trigger out to 300 yards but then after that we got to go into some pretty fun different stuff too to include running the punisher if you're unfamiliar the punisher pretty awesome course of fire essentially it's basically a big prop line all kinds of different things that you would potentially run into whether it's just like a windowsill or top of a roof whatever it may be and you have to basically figure out in a rather hasty manner a solid or solid enough shooting position to get the required hit and for this I think some people are shooting some different targets for myself it was a headshot on the full-size man at 100 and shot to the body at 200 and basically running through it okay, Way to a little hole. Eyes up, eyes up. Finding your target. Okay. Okay. Work your way to the barrel. Work your way to the barrel. Eyes up. I always look forward to the opportunity to shoot punisher because it's just a ton of fun some of those positions like they end up eating your lunch and you're like ah this is way easier with a red dot but you get what you get ultimately though is a lot of fun running through that and if memory serves rounding out day two there's a target that we actually had to range so we we're given them dimensions and hey come up with however far you think it is and dial and let's see where we're at so you had to use whatever your reticle was either mill or moa and yeah, try and figure it out do a little bit of math for my own part i actually had a pretty handy little kind of cheat sheet by sobcheck sobcheck security llc and basically a bunch of common dimensions to include like ipsic target things along those lines and hey if it's this many mils it should be approximately this distance and so i actually went off that and it got me close but yeah pretty cool shooting up onto that hillside 
and also on day two while most everyone was shooting prone off a bipod again especially zeroing like most stable possible because you need a good working zero but after that on day two i was like eh, i'm gonna shoot off a tripod which i actually enjoy it becomes more and more difficult moving to sitting and then ultimately moving to standing the further you are from the ground less stable but I was there to learn and get some experience and practice and that definitely afforded me that in part just application like i shoot one to have fun stuff like that but one of my applications is hunting and pretty much never can you shoot from the prone hunting like there's always grass obstructions things like that so usually shooting off a tripod and this gave me a good opportunity to get some reps day three time to do some hiking get into that high angle and i will say just geographically like topography out there at thunder ranch it's beautiful so met up and basically stepped off making sure you had everything you needed for the day to include water lunch everything like that all your ammo whatever other support equipment you need and start hiking up there and so cool getting up there just beautiful views all around and there were a number of different shooting positions so broke apart in groups of three or four, going to different shooting positions where there was a number of target arrays and started to basically cycle through. Hidden out there, down in depressions or on other ridges, all kinds of other targets. And really cool getting to shoot through in basically a bunch of different field conditions. So building a position with either a bipod if you had it, or some sort of shooting bag you happen to bring up there and yeah working on getting those hits there's a hit again nice job there's a ton of fun shooting up there and i think it was the second I guess second position that my group had moved to i was working on shooting through again just experimenting with different shooting positions working some from basically a notch and then i decided to do a little more shooting using my sling so there's a method where you basically wrap your sling around the tree like if you disconnect the rear part and then you can load your rifle and the sling basically binds up on a tree or whatever you happen to wrap it around so I started working on that, trying to build a good position, but then disaster struck. If you saw my loadout video, you'll know that I had, again, carbon fiber barrel from Proof Research, who I got through Tag Firearms in a six arc for the minifix. And I had one of 10 prototype bolts for the six arc. It ended up breaking, a lug broke on it and bummer because it basically deadlined that gun for me that day and i don't know how it happened probably had five or six hundred rounds through the gun at that time since then as a quick aside i guess i ended up talking to q or nick one of the engineers at q he's like wait what happened i'm like yeah and he's like man that is made for i forget the spec like some insanely high pressure spec ammo as far as what he designed the bolt for so he went and actually turned down a 308 proof round. If you're unfamiliar with proof rounds, I think they're 20% above the SAMI spec. So basically he turned it down so that it would fit the bolt face of the six arc. So they could basically test fire some bolts. And sure enough, even with like 308 proof rounds, no issues with the other bolts. I just happened to get a bad one, which bummer, but it happens. So I basically I ended up missing a couple of the different shooting positions, which it is what it is. But that basically wrapped up day three for me, but there was still day four. Once again, we met up and started heading up the mountain, this time to a different peak there on Thunder Ranch. And from there, again, a number of different positions that we were going to end up shooting from. And while the weather was actually really nice, especially for Thunder Ranch, because you get crazy weather like sometimes it'll snow or it'll rain or it'll be really hot first three days were actually really really nice and mild day three definitely getting more wind and by the end of it 
we were in the rain. But when we were up there, start shooting through a bunch of cool positions, some of them pretty uncomfortable and you just had to figure it out. Like, how can I get my gun to more or less like rest on this relatively unstable surface, build a good shooting position with whatever you have, whatever shooting bag you happen to bring up there and start to get after it. And yes, for my own part, redundancy, right? I ended up bringing my backup gun. I had my SCAR 20S in 6.5 Creedmoor, the jumbo shrimp on there. So yeah, was fortunately able to go up there and shoot through those positions. And that thing I will say was a lot of fun to shoot up there. In part, you're not running a bolt, like it's semi-auto. So it definitely made it not only, well, yeah, easier to spot and then to follow up with a second shot in that if you have to run a bolt, like you somewhere in there running a bolt and having a gas gun, way easier to make whatever follow-up adjustments, especially when you get an immediate wind call. And again, since you're up there for lunch, bring everything up there, why not have a nice cup of hot coffee up there? So definitely made myself a cup of coffee. And again, just cycled through the different positions, shooting. One of the last shooting positions up there, or the last one that I rotated through rather, I think it was 12, 13, and 1500 yards, pretty far. And I ended up actually not shooting all the way out. And while we had awesome cadre, great spotters, just environmentals, the trace would disappear. And again, started to have some participate or participation, precipitation, started to have some rain. And so weren't able to see impacts or clearly, at which point, if you can't make a correction, then like stop, stop sending dollars into the abyss. But overall, really fun shooting up from that mountaintop. I'm rounding out day four, back down to Brown Range. Got to do some pretty fun shooting. Basically some like teamwork countdown. So if you think about a unit, hitting an objective you have a bunch of designated marksmen with designated targets and then you have an entry team and so on your countdown at a certain number you will have all of your dms designated markmen engage their targets instantly and simultaneously and then you will have like the breach go and the team make entry so it all happens seamlessly but getting the people or getting people to pull the trigger at the same time, that ah, can be tricky sometimes. But ended up pretty awesome. Everyone online breaking that shot pretty much simultaneously. I have control. Stand by. Five, four, one, two, five, four. One, run the bolt. One more time, same target. And then kind of a short little debrief there on Brown Range before heading back to the classroom for certificates. Overall, it was an awesome course. Number of different fronts. One, four days behind your gun. Right? A lot of opportunities to just get rounds down range and work with your gear and your setup. And through any type of course, whether it's pistol, carbine, precision, you have opportunities outside of kind of like this really static environment that you create. And so with that, you find like, oh, hey, like this works really well for me. Or, hey, this piece of kit doesn't work. Like this rear bag is great, but it weighs like 20 pounds. Like I'm not hiking it up the mountain. So what do I need to bring to be able to create a good stable position? Different little things along those lines, which is really valuable. And the other thing that I actually really liked was it's beautiful in opportunities to just shoot at different distances at different angles especially angles like you talk to a lot of people and their world is a 25 yard indoor range i feel for you that sucks or maybe there's a hundred yard outdoor range and you're like oh, that's cool it's four times as big as a 25 yard indoor range but being able to actually stretch your gun out and prove it out and actually get good dope because the other part of that is you will use a ballistic app and be like, cool, it says it's this, maybe or not. And sometimes just gun, load, barrel length, whatever, 
maybe it, that is not what you're getting. And so the opportunity to actually prove it out in reality, like, hey, at this distance, I need to dial this to make a hit. And I think that unto itself is really valuable. Overall, just really cool opportunity down there. With all that said, who do I think this class would be good for? Honestly, anyone who wants to get better with their rifle. While it was high angle rifle training, basically on day three and four, there's a lot of flat range stuff too. And ultimately all of that stuff just comes full circle into just being proficient with your rifle. Any circumstance, whether you're shooting uphill, downhill, like on a flat range, prone, or feel the expedient shooting position off of a rock, like whatever you get. And I think there's just tons of skills along the way that, yeah, end up picking up in courses like this. Overall, rad time down there at Thunder Ranch. If you're interested, there'll be a link down below. You can go check out this as well as some of their other offerings. And yeah, if it's the right fit, like I would encourage you to go check it out. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadge.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. Missionary